Welcome back. It's the first Monty and Wolf show of LCK 2024 spring playoffs. Well, Wolf, it went exactly as we predicted. Uh, 3-0 for Hanwha, although potentially slightly closer than we might have thought uh, with Kwang Dog in some of those early games. And then the clown fiesta that was D-plus versus KT. We said we didn't really know who was going to win. We both predicted KT. It was not KT who, in fact, won those games. Um, we knew it was going to be uh, a clown fiesta. We knew it was going to be kind of a, I don't know. I don't want to call it a dumpster fire, but it felt like it was a dumpster fire yesterday. It was, everything was difficult to ascertain. Like, it's, it's one of those series where you have a good idea about what you think is going to happen, what you think the team's strengths are. Um, when they play against weaker teams, like they clearly have their own style, but then when they play against each other, it all goes out the window and it's just about who has the better form on the day. And in this particular series, it was who has the better form in each individual game, um, as well as who has the better drafts in each individual draft, because it wasn't even necessarily one team with the better drafting because both teams did definitely have a big miss um, in this best of five. And like D plus just using their R5 counter picks for Lucid every game, even though they already had the enemy jungle pick and could have then counter picked hop and they decided not to do it. It was very strange. Um, and then they picked like, they were like, let's play Nocturne R5 where we're already losing the lanes. And then we'll just, pick I mean, it was harder. I, I, I mean, my favorite part about the Nocturne game wolf was the fact that they had just lost with that exact composition with Jin Zhao. And then they were like, but what if we could lose the early game harder by having a jungler with less pressure on the map and on objectives? Let's pick Nocturne. Um, also, just as a point, Lucid did have a very good series when he was on Jackson Lee Sin. Makes you wonder why we went into the Jin Zhao and like, why, why did we even pivot into that after he dominated game number one? Um, you know, Lucid playing for his little life on this team, potentially with the rumors of Tarzan coming into the D plus roster. But I think he did very well over the course of this series when he was actually given the champions that he was being successful on and should have been picked earlier. Yeah, I do agree. I, th I think that they should have just played to his strengths a little bit harder. Um, there was some really weird priority in the drafts. And then the Nocturne pick was, of course, the most bizarre just because for context, they were playing a losing bottom lane and they decided to lose it even harder by locking in a Nocturne. They couldn't make any impact um, on the map at all whatsoever. Uh, and I believe even in that, that game, let's look up the draft again, they had a losing top lane as well. Um, but it was just really weird and unusual uh, drafting. You know, it was where they had the, they were playing into the Renekton and where Perfect popped off and got two kills early. And um, yeah, it was not going to be, he's not going to be saving that lane. Um, it was really bizarre how they held these red side, like they chose red side and then held R5 for a jungle pick, which... We already knew what Pioshik was playing in every scenario, and they could have had counter pick for the top lane. Um, well, it's also one thing if you're going to have a flex pick that could potentially be like jungle and support. Like what, if you're early picking a rel or something like that, right? It, it, it makes sense, but they weren't doing that. Yeah, They weren't doing that at all. It was very weird. Um, now, the one draft that I really did like uh, for D plus was the... Um, Silas draft, which you know everybody knew. Oh, it's great. This was the the actual giga uh, giga brain draft moment where Showmaker is one of the best Silas players in the LCK. Um, they had Nar, they had Alistair, um, so it was pretty insane value. They had the Azir obviously as well, which Silas is historically very good into. We had the stats come up on the screen. It was like a you know sixty percent win rate or something like that, maybe even a little bit higher for Silas into the Azir matchup uh, across LCK. So that pick was great. He played it extremely well. Um, it was one of those games. As a reminder, um, that he, you know, we haven't seen a lot of Silas, but uh, when we have seen it from Showmaker, that was game one versus Genji, where he had the bot gank like at level one or level two early on, and they dominated that game one versus Genji. Um, so he's been really effective on it. And to talk about why this was so great was they actually just, you know, saved the R5 for the mid lane. And what do they do? They kind of like bait out the NAR pick, which is perfect. It's it, it, throughout this whole season. It's been his counter pick to Cassante, right? Um, and so they see, oh, okay, well, they're going to take Alistair, Azir, 
Jin Zhao and Nar. So this is a excellent bevy of ultimates to select from uh, if you are Silas. And I mean, they just dominated this game from start to finish. Showmaker was everywhere on the map, diving, making plays in other lanes, getting kills in the mid lane. He was great. Yeah. I mean, it's one of his best picks. So I I'd like to see D plus lean into this more in the future and not play just what's meta and, you know, just end up playing standard mid laners for Showmaker. As instead of getting like, oh, it's Azir, it's meta, it's boring, but I'm playing Grasp, it's interesting, it's different. Like, I like to see Showmaker just playing things he really enjoys to play, like more casts and more Silas. Um, you know, picks like this that give him the ability to pop off and carry because his team needs that. BDD is the opposite player in that he's more of a facilitator, he's more of a, a player who uses his um, CC to set up team fights, but he doesn't necessarily end up being the main character oftentimes. Um, you had a game this season where he was like 0-1-15 and on Talia, and that's the kind of gameplay I'm talking about where he's like, I'm not getting any kills, but I am going to make sure I'm involved in everything our team is doing all the time and setting up shoves and, and doing stuff like that. And uh, you end up giving Showmaker a matchup into a player like that with the Silas where Showmaker's in control, and he played it really well. And BDD just didn't respect the ganks. He played super aggressively in that fifth and final game was way too far forward lost his flash and died anyways and then it, from that point on it was like okay mid is done um and then perfect didn't have a great landing phase either it was under pressure a lot by lucid lucid just outplayed Pioshik in that final game um to to a massive degree and obviously it in most of the when, games i mean Pioshik was very underwhelming during the series and, and obviously it helps when your your lanes are winning um as, as they were they had the winning bottom lane with avaris but that fifth game was the one D plus game, and uh, and frankly, like the one. Okay, maybe I guess I think game two was pretty one sided, but overall, the most one sided game in the series and the most dominant win for D plus out of all of the games. And so, if you want to have any chance of taking a game off of Gen G, um, as they did once already in regular season, I think we want to see drafting like this. We want to see gameplay like this um, from D plus because even though we talked about. Um, you know, the history of D plus and Gen G and how we thought D plus probably won't win, but if they do, it'll probably be in a weird, strong draft read situation. And Gen G might not want to pick them because they know they could beat Hanwa anyways. And D plus does play uh, Gen G close, but nope, Gen G just insta locked, slammed down the D plus vote. And who can blame <laughs> them after that series? Because to be fair, yeah. both D plus and, and KT Rolster looked extremely weak uh, in terms of competing with top three. And if I were Genji, I'd be like, well, forget the history, man. This roster just isn't what it used to be. Like, I'll take that one. Um, uh, obviously. Easy. I mean, we're talking about, e even though we did get the the very close series, as we discussed, like, there was a pretty commanding win uh, from D+, Plus the last time they faced in game number one. But Genji cleaned up that series, even though it was a little bit sloppy. And it was actually Genji's closest series of the second round robin. So you'd think, well, they might be a little bit afraid. But, I mean, D-plus is not a good team. Their their mid and late game macro is still very suspect. When they got, you know, the I think they figured out that the way to affect these games was simply to um, not go to mid and late game without a giant lead. And a lot of that was predicated on Lucid getting early advantages with Lee Sin. And that's all well and good because Peanut doesn't really play Lee Sin or he plays it badly these days. So it's not a contested pick. However... When they go up against Canyon Wolf, that's Canyon's Lee Sin has been great. So a lot of these early game picks are, and like skirmishing picks are going to be much more contested in the next series. And I just don't think Lucid is going to be able to do what he did because I don't think Canyon's going to underperform in the same way that Pioshik did. And by the way, Pioshik lovers, how's it fucking going now? You told me, oh, look at Pioshik's carry games this split. I said, fuck this version of KT. This version of KT is giga fraudulent because when they turn back into a pumpkin, you're going to be very, very sad. And even though Perfect leveled up his game throughout the split, uh, here we go. Pioshik has a pretty bad series. BDD apparently can't play Ari, even though he has 15 Ari games during over the course of his career. And they just fucking lose. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I don't even. I, I'm not even mad at, at at KT because D plus didn't play a great series either. They played a great game five, um, and we knew neither of these teams was going any further than this. Like, 
if KT wins, they get smashed by Genji as well. Yeah, they beat them in regular season one time when the Santa was given to uh, KT twice and Genji didn't respect it. That's not going to happen again. That wouldn't have happened again. It did not happen in the second round, Robin, in, in the uh, series which Genji crushed KT even harder than KT 2 0 them. And we knew this was kind of the end of the road. Like, this felt like to me, like an exhibition match of like, wow, who will go to round two? Will Showmaker be the the one of the core four mids who goes, or will it be BDD to to have the honor of getting absolutely destroyed by Gen G with no chance, um, no no chance they're ever gonna take a game? It, it felt like, and to me, I look at this and I go, well, if if D plus wants to have any chances, the drafts have to be as crisp as they were in that fifth game. Um, Lucid has to be able to play something else than than Lee Sin because you know Vi is gonna be banned against him probably. Lee Sin gonna be banned against him. Um, Candy will just take the Vi away, unlike KT, who just left it up almost every time. Um, so you're not going to be dealing with, like, <laughs> I love BDD so much, but, like, weird Vagar zoning is not going to be, like, the, the frustration. <laughs> I don't even think the Vagar pick was that good. Like, everyone was kind of, was kind of glazing over a little no, bit. No, it's, it's super, it's super mid. The thing is that uh, BDD just doesn't want to pick Ari when it's up. Yeah. What the fuck, man? But, like, Chovy is not just going to be like, ooh, it's Vagar, watch out. He's going to be like, no, I'm playing Yone, and I'm I'm actually going to 1v9 this game and pop off. Like, the the level... The, the, the thing is, is that Vagar, over the last couple of years, has been used, especially in LPL, like a couple of years ago, as an Ari counter, because you can just cage Ari, and therefore she can't ult anywhere, and it's been... And you have targeted abilities, like your R is targeted, right? So it can be effective in that matchup. But usually it's been a counter pick, not just like slapping it down there against any old matchup. Um, kind of like we've seen in in LCK, Annie is a counter to Ari as well, um, because you just dump a bear on her and you win the lane, right. and it's really easy to to team fight around her. So I I just I don't see this um I, I don't I don't see this this next series with Genji to be competitive in any way. Um. Unfortunately, like, you know, if you listen to my cast yesterday, you know, I you probably noticed I didn't really mention it that much. Uh, <laughs> the, like, who will Gen G pick? Like, what are they going to do? Because it's just everybody knows that unless a miracle happens, it's like unless a DRX esque miracle happens, like, you know, two years ago, we were like, we don't even need to talk about that. That's that's actually just a waste of time. Um, <laughs> and they show up like in the craziest way. Then I I just I can't predict right now that that D plus take even a a single game. Do we want to talk about Kwangdong versus Hanwa? Yes. <laughs> you know you know what, what's so funny is... about Pioshik is people people forget this very important detail about Pioshik. So like wow look how good Pioshik is. I'm like, do you remember how Juan actually had to be the one qualifying for Worlds because Pioshik was a steaming pile of shit at the time? This guy is not consistent. He is the streakiest motherfucker on the planet. And so every time you guys think you have some faith in him or you see those pop-off games, just remember his benching is right around the corner. It's right around the corner. He probably should be benched for the series he played against D+. You'll have to worry about that. There's no more games to play um, <laughs> until next season. Maybe Tarzan should go to KT. <laughs> Could be. Um... <laughs> I don't know if that will happen. I think it's much more like he goes to D plus, but well, frankly, if Lucid's a free agent, he should probably go to KT. <laughs> At least he has Barrel to mind control him with some shot calling. I think it's actually an upgrade. There's um, you know, the new loan system goes into effect as well um, for next season, so we might see players get loaned um, from challengers to teams um, for short term use uh which can allow you to like try them out and get them for less than a uh, minimum salary um it's it's basically a way to try to stop teams from hoarding uh, hoarding challengers players and hoping they're going to get co buyout contracts but they're not getting buyout contracts and so like they're just in basically purgatory uh in lckcl like thanatos although thanatos made a tweet in english um and made a twitter account and with broken English, so we know he's he's probably going overseas, um, because usually uh, overseas teams like require you to to have a social media presence and 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 you know have some sponsor obligations and stuff like that. So he made a Twitter account, made it in English, made one tweet. That's it. I'm like, 
he's going overseas. It's it's super obvious. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> he's already buttering up those English speaking fans. Um, so Phantos at least seems to be freed from CL prison. And everyone always gets sad, like, but he didn't go to LCK. I'm so sorry. He was never coming to LCK. We we all knew it. It was it was super obvious. But I'm glad he's going to the greener pastures where he could actually maybe make a name for himself outside of, of Korea. But anyways, let's talk about Kwangdong uh, and their early games that they then could not turn into mid to late games where they team fought horribly and were absolutely destroyed um, by Hanwha. Because the the early games were pretty good and the, the early ganks were actually quite nice. Yep. Cuz, Cuz played a great series. I know, man. It, it's so tragic because both Cuz and Dudu just like they were the reasons that we saw Kwangdong doing very, very well uh, during their run at the start of spring. They had a good series. They got these advantages. We got to see this spellbook Sejuani not having smite at third Drake, which was hilarious, uh, where he just rocks up and they take a Drake fight, even though he doesn't have smite. Not sure what's going through their minds there. So questionable shot calling. And then we get to see Bulls. Legendary 20% win rate Draven. It's coming, Wolf. You got you got to watch this in Challenger. So were you psyched to see the bold Draven come out? We knew it's we knew it's one of the picks that he likes to play. Like he only plays for early game lane picks. So it, it was super obvious that he was gonna lock it in. And I, I wasn't hyped for it per se, but I was like, well, this makes sense. You know, if he's on a scaling pick instead in these drafts, I'm like, well, that's not he's not gonna win with those. So he played Kaisa as well in game one. And Kaisa is, I feel like, such a bad pick right now, especially for the type of draft that Quantum Freaks were trying to to win with, where they had the Rek'Sai side picks, so they're trying to get top prior top control there. Cuz playing aggressive early game, trying to 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 basically get a massive early game lead and then put that into the mid game where you could then start team fighting with the Azir. And it's Kaisa, so that's it. Like she has no depth. She has no long term damage in team fights. And Azir is not going to get it done in the mid game until he has like three items. He can't really carry a longer fight. You're playing into Corky, and it's Zekka's Corky to be fair, but it's just not. It's not going to happen. Like I think the Kaisa pick was just it, it, not it. Like considering the other picks that that they could have played, they could have played Aphelios. Now Bulls Aphelios is tragically bad. But if you still are in playoffs round one. You can only play the win lane, get prio champs, or only early game, no scaling champs. I can't play Ezreal, can't play Aphelios. Um, they banned Jinx. He wasn't going to play Jinx. Um, if you can't play Jinx in this meta, you probably shouldn't go to round two of playoffs. And that's that's just how I feel about it. Like I, Bull, Bull came in as a player who changed the, the nature of how this roster plays, but he did it off the back of basically playing Kalista every single game when it wasn't being banned against him. And as soon as that that started being taken away, hey, he played a bunch of Senna. He, he did play a little bit of Senna. It wasn't always very good. He also played a little bit of uh, Seraphine, which was, wasn't great either. But um, he played a lot of that in Challengers as well. But as soon as he was kind of exposed as, oh, you can't play late game carries, Quantum Freaks went on a massive losing streak. Uh, and then they barely made playoffs in the end. And we get to playoffs, and he's like, well, I can only play Draven here. That's it. That's all I can Well, do. with the Kaisa, the idea is that they want to get into the back line versus the Quirky and the Zeri, um, considering that they have, you know, Rakan, they've got Sejuani, they've got Rek'Sai. Um, but the real tragic thing, Wolf, is that they just got bodied in lane. I mean, how are you losing? How are you losing with Draven Ash into Callista Blitzcrank? Like, how are you actually down in CS? And also, what the fuck is your team doing in game number two where you take Draven Renata into Zeri and Peanut's camping bot side and Cuz is, like, trying to dive the mid turret with a fucking Aurelian soul to kill Zekka? I mean, you have to actually play to your win conditions, but there's really no excuse for Bull and Quantum just, like, letting Viper be even or ahead in CS in all of these games where he should have lost lane. I mean, the the fact that they let Bull they let Bull sit on an island in game two means I feel like they have no idea what the game plan is going to be. They just wanted to get any lead they could, but then they they let Bull die and his stacks are gone, and that's that's the game. Like that's just Bull it. had zero kills in yeah. two games on Draven, zero. 
So you have to play around that. It's not bull. It, it very clearly seems like bull is like, all right, put bulldog on late game. I'll play early Draven. That's what we're doing. That's the game plan. And Stephen Max is like, cool. Yeah, that's the strategy. Good luck. And like, then they load into the rift. And he like, he like takes his headset off and like shakes the hand of the Hanwha coaches. He's like, hey, Dandy, like, uh, you know, it's Draven. Good luck. Um, and, that, and that's like the game plan. Because otherwise, I didn't see really much. I mean, because his early pathing allowed him some agency and he did set up a lot of early game kills, but not onto the Draven. So who cares? And I feel like Kaisa, you know, when you go back to game one, like, the the Kaisa into this this uh draft is just it feels so ass. Like you go in and then you instantly get killed by a Aatrox if he's near the back line. If he's coming in, if he's flanking, instantly kills you. If you go on to Zekka, he's quirky, so he has either Valkyrie and or package. You you can't kill him fast. Well, enough. he's Zekka, so let's be clear. He never has package. That's true. He's just he's actually he, trying he, to he never people. actually uses package. So <laughs> yeah, I, what I've noticed true. about Zekka's quirky wolf is that he either doesn't pick up his package ever, 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 doesn't use it for early Drake fights, just literally lets it sit there rotting, or he packages it into five members of the enemy team and commits suicide. So is the package a concern? I don't know. Well, like, on paper, it should be a lot to allow you to get away from this guy. So, um, and then you have Peanut who can just root you as well. Like, the Kaisa does not want to go in to any of these champions, actually. Because, um, yeah, if, if, like, you found a Quirky, like, in a side by himself or something, and you were ahead on Kaisa, uh, which he really wasn't that ahead, and then you, like, ulted a, a Quirky, yeah, you kill him 1v1. Sure, I'll give you that. But, like, that's just not how League of Legends is played. And so that's why most people who, who play Kaisa in Pro now build the poke variant and try to use it for her utility. Um, and he did not do that. So I, I didn't, I don't really didn't understand the game plan around this one. And then obviously they had a, a nice tempo advantage, but then they threw a bunch of team fights trying to overforce with this Kaisa pick and it, they just came up empty. And then Honda life were like, cool. We're back in the game. GG it's Viper's Airy. Uh And are we surprised that this Kaisa didn't find success in these mid-game team fights because I'm I'm really not myself personally, but I I I just don't understand this 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 draft idea here from Kwangno Freaks. And well, they also team fought in the mid game like pretty horribly. Yeah, but I mean, um, in part due to the comp, but yes, their their execution was bad. I mean, I think you know with the leads that they had in game one and game two, they certainly could have won, especially because they had a very fast Baron take in game one, but they they like super threw on the turn. So, I mean, look, I, I, let's talk about Hanwa for a little bit because I was very dispirited to see Zekka playing Quirky again. And then I have to watch a, a Zekka Quirky game where he goes 8 1 and 13. And you look at that scoreline and you think to yourself, wow, is Zekka good at Quirky now? The answer is he's fucking not. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, this guy, like, doesn't know Quirky timings. They don't play around Quirky's like power spikes with the package. Like, he is tragically bad at this champion still. And and it's so deceptive. But Hanwha comes back in the mid game in both game one and game two. Game three is a big Hanwha stomp from start to finish. Um, but it is, I would say, concerning, Wolf, that they're going up against T1 in the next round. T1 is famously famous for having a very strong early game. And when you let them have a strong early game, they don't just giga throw like Kwangdong does. So, like, if I'm a Hanwha fan, I am a bit worried, honestly, by that game one and game two. Yeah, I, I think we can just kind of transition to talking about what, what the T1 series will mean against Hanwa. And I think that Viper and Delight, you know, they have had some dominant lane series, right, where they've actually crushed lane, including this one. Um, in the last yeah, Viper and Delight were both very good during this yeah. series. Um, but I feel like that's that's not something that you default win against Guma Karia. It depends on the form of Guma Karia on the day because it's been a little bit up and down towards the end of the season. But that that's not one that you can rely on like you did, I think, very heavily in this series. Um, so I think Peanut is going to have to be the one who is outclassing owner if Hanwa is going to win this this series. Um, I did predict before the playoffs started, before we saw this series, that Hanwa would beat T1 um, in this first matchup just because I thought T1's current form was not as good. Peanut looked really good um, going to the end of the regular season. And, you know, Zayas was looking, starting to look a little bit exposed with the, the champion pool and wasn't having the greatest uh, end of his regular season either. Ended up getting top two, of course, but they lost the series to Hanwa in uh, the end of round two. 
um, which was also part of my my thoughts going into what it would look like, assuming Hanwa faced T1, which you know we could have realistically sussed out a long time ago because these the first round of playoffs was pretty predictable. And I, I look at Zeka as a potential liability in this series because this is not like Faker with injured hands or anything like that. You know, there's no there's no like asterisk here about you know, Zekka being able to outclass Faker. And I know all the Zekka fans are like, but he is the better mechanical mid laner than Faker. Um, but I, I don't, just don't think that that's how best of fives are going to be played out. You know, maybe Zekka gets like a solo kill on Faker one time in this best of five. But Faker doesn't, he doesn't like get crushed in lane. He doesn't get solo killed generally almost ever. Um, and he doesn't die to ganks either. So Zekka's not going to be coming into this getting leads um, on these these picks that he likes to carry with. You know, he played Azir and Corky, those are not the picks that uh, people associate Azir with Zeka because he won Worlds and Azir was super meta then, but like, he's he's not a great Azir, right? He's Faker, never been that that Azir player, for sure. Yeah. Faker's Azir is much better. Now, his Ari, you know, that Ari Vi, I'm like, oh, that's pretty scary, but T1 probably don't let you have that. So, I look at this series um, and I go, okay, Viper, Viper and Delight probably won't win lane, but they'll probably be better in team fights than, than Gumakaria. I think Zeka you know, will be, he's not going to be playing um, his favorite picks, let's say. Uh, and he might be able to, to offer something. I to mean, him. we'll see because like the last time these teams met, you know, Peanut was pretty much dominating owner. Um, and like that, if, if they choose to like target Peanut, that could mean that there's an opportunity to actually do something. And I, you know, Maokai is, is a much is a must ban here because peanut is undefeated. This split He's 11 and zero now on Maokai. And T1 is not a team that really plays Maokai, especially, you know, out of the jungle. Like it's not really owners go to champion. So I do think that a lot of the bands are going to be concerned with peanut rather than Zeka. Yeah. And, and I think that the, the key factor in this series will be how well Doran and peanut play. Because Doran, you know, going into this series, obviously we know he's not a better top laner than um, Zeus, but he is, he's like the anti Zeus. Like he, Zeus is usually the guy who puts on so much pressure. Doran absorbs pressure super well. And oftentimes T1 just plays through bottom only because like it's cool. Zeus just wins the top lane no matter what. And Doran has, has consistently shut him down. And not like one lane against him and got solo kills. I just mean relieve that pressure. And then Peanut sometimes plays around it and turns Zayas into a weak link for, for T1. We've seen this before um, in playoff matches between these teams in the past. So, um, and that's without Doran. Now that Doran's there, it feels like it's an even stronger win con for Honda Life Esports here. Um, talking about how Peanut and Doran played on Gen G. But the uh, the the way that, that this goes for T1 well, I think, is just around mid-game team fights and really strong shutdowns of Viper, like making sure Viper doesn't actually get the opportunity to pop off in late game team fights. Maybe they target him a little bit in um in, in taking away some of those late game champions like the Zeri, because we know Guma doesn't prefer to play Zeri. Viper will absolutely play it. So I think it's gonna be a close series, but I'm still giving the edge to Hanwa just because I think so much has to go right for T1. And I'm not ready to trust that owner and Zeus are going to be the same powerhouse players they were in round one. And then they crushed, like, the LCK, most of the LCK this season was actually, the gap was so huge that some of the most impressive plays you saw from Zayas and Owner on, like, Aatrox every game from Zayas were against, like, Nongshim and, and Firex and, and frankly, KT and D+, where it's like, well, this these teams just aren't even, they're not even on the same tier of competition. Um, and so I, I do wonder how much prep has gone into this, how much they're going to focus on Zayas, like, improving into a wider champion pool, what counter picks they might get for him on red side, for example. Um, and that's the big question mark for you going to also, will owner be able to handle peanut because peanut has had his number for like two years. Um, <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, we saw that in the Hanwa versus T1 upset match that already occurred. Owner has one game on Maokai this split, by the way, which is the same number of games he has on Belveth. So, you know, take from that what you will. The champion pools are quite different. Obviously, owner has been preferring Rel, Lee Sin, whereas Maokai, Poppy, Sejuani. So it's a lot of tank junglers have been really, you know, the preferences for Peanut. 
Um, Vi is also frequently banned against Peanut, so he would pick that more probably if he could get his hands on it. But that's almost always banned against him. Um, this is going to be an interesting matchup, but I, you know, I at least was relieved during game three to see Hanwha be a little bit more dominant in the early game because they did win early game really hard against, you know, T1 at points, but they, they felt very, uh, you know, cuz was out playing them in the early game and it's going to, I think, you know, Hanwha may be a favorite based on what we saw in the owner peanut matchup in the early game progression and also T1's current form, um, heading into this match because, I, I don't know, Wolf, like I was not impressed with owner's performance and that has been the power of T1. When they won game two, T1 won by having a, you know, a very dominant bot lane push, but Viper and Delight have been so good lately that if T1's not winning bot lane and owner can't play aggressively through the bot lane and invade, which is what happened in game two, I don't know if T1 wins this. Like I think, you know, the meta has shifted in a way where, Viper's extremely confident, obviously, playing the Zeri into a lot of matchups. He's really good on the Zeri right now. He can also play the Lucian really, really well. So it's, I think it's going to be tough, Wolf. I think it's going to be tough for T1 to win this matchup. I think I favor Hanwha. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, and just to, to contextualize Zeus's champion pool, because he has played, let me count them, 13 champions this season. He has played five champions more than no sorry excuse me four champions more than with four more games he has four games of twisted fate four zero he has four games of yone three one he has six games of Cassante six zero and then he has 16 games of atrox <laughs> so right, just blind like, atrox so just like you know when we've seen him play these other also picks, like, Dor dorian is zayas's daddy in playoffs yeah, so. that's that's what I'm saying. Like Peanut and Doran, they shut him down. Like, look at the the LCK finals from from the Genji days when they were on that roster, and it consistently, like Zayas just ended up being um, a, a black void for T1 in those series, oftentimes. And it's just because the way that T1 plays around just leaving Aatrox on an island or leaving whatever meta pick that Zayas is locking in every game on an island, just like, oh, you you win that. You're the best top laner. It's fine. And giving him no help. And then Peanut comes up and actually shuts him down is super problematic. And when he's played these other games, uh, like when he pulled out the Jace against T1, these kind of off games where the Aatrox is banned, he just didn't look super comfortable. Like his Jace got owned by Keen's Cassante. You know, that like that's that that happened. And um I I I don't I don't think that Zayas has a bad champion pool, right? I'm I'm just wanna make No, obviously not. I think I don't think he is like an Aatrox one trick. I'm not saying that, but he he has looked a little exposed at times this season. There's been a few moments and like the second place team, it's a tier list season. Seven out of ten of our LCK teams are like just two tiers below T one, so you know take it as you will like he's very good but well against the and, best teams he has been challenged quite heavily i would say right and and you know he's been blind picking the uh, the atrox so his teammates can have more favorable matchups and maybe he needs the counter picks right now but again if you ban a lot of the the dominant like lane dominant bot laners okay well we know goomba yushi can go back to jinx in particular potentially right but the problem is, it's not that he can't play Jinx. It's that T1 as a team plays substantially worse when they don't have bot lane pressure, right? Yeah. And if you're opting into a scaling matchup versus Viper and Delight in their present form, and with Peanut, you know, owner is much worse when he doesn't have the bot lane pressure at playing the map. And Peanut doesn't give a shit. He's fine doing whatever. Um, Because frankly... Peanut is way smarter than Owner is. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you guys. Peanut is more intelligent and more skilled at playing jungle from a macro perspective than Owner is. Yeah, we go back to the 2022, you know, thing that we were going back to all the time. Like, Peanut, brain, Owner, hands. Like, that's that's what it is. <laughs> um, so, I think that hasn't really changed that much um, over the last two years, but... I'm I'm gonna have to to lean towards Hanwha on this one, um, similar to you. And I just think Viper is the stronger late game eighty carry. I think Faker's shot calling, you know, and and some of the the mistakes that we've seen teams make against 
T1 where everyone tunnels onto oh, wait, Faker's way overextended and they they bait him into a bad fight. I just feel like Hanwha doesn't fall for that most of the time, um, especially with the comps that they've been running. One final question I have for this series is going to be how good is Zayas's, um, uh, his uh, Rek'Sai? I don't know why the name was escaping me. Because I, I, was, like I was looking at, uh, this is not in this matchup, but I was looking at Keen's solo queue account the other day, and of course he is spamming the ever-loving shit out of the Rek'Sai, right? Because I, I feel like Doran, I, I would not trust Doran on Rek'Sai. It's too complicated <laughs> for him. Like, you've got to tunnel over the walls, and you got to be flanking properly. And, oh, you know, the come on. Phase, and the laning phase, Doran... I, 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 in the laning phase, I trust Doran on it because, like, he could just take bad trades and just, like, go underground. Oh, like, yeah, for sure. Killing. But in terms of team I, in fights, fact, I in it, fact, in fact, Wolf, I think it's actually a way for Doran not to die in laning phase. So it has its advantages. I feel like Aatrox, or rather than Aatrox, Zayas, who I just associate with Aatrox now, um, I feel like Zayas will be able I to... I mean, Wolf, team. I will say, after watching the Rex, Doran play Rek'Sai into Dudu's Aatrox, I absolutely do not want to see Doran play Rek'Sai into Zayas's Aatrox. Well, that's they will I'm, lose. I'm just saying, like, I think the, the um, Zayas... Uh, Rek'Sai will be much better in team fighting than than Doran's uh, will end up being. So I just think it's a way better champion for him. I think he's a, a much smarter player about how he flanks and stuff like that. Doran, when Doran's on a flank champion, like, you better hope your team is winning really hard, and then you could just like show up and get three kills at the end. But if you have to be the the guy who's like contesting the side and threatening the AD carry, hasn't always been Doran's best um, best play style. But that that could be an angle that. Um, Zayas uses to to great effect. I think something that Hanalei should probably prepare for. Yeah, I I think uh, that that is definitely one of the takeaways from this series in this upcoming matchup is watching in game three Doran do very badly on the Rexai into Dudu's Aatrox should not fill you with confidence for the T one series. No, I that's not yeah that's not. The the win condition I'm looking for uh, for Hanwa taking this one, but so we, I still think Hanwa actually probably wins this series. Yeah, I think so too, and that means that we might have a world where you know the winners finals is Genji versus Hanwa, not Genji versus T1 for the first time since we got this format. So that's kind of cool, you know. Um, it's it, that's 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 rad. Like Hanwa going up there, maybe they could go directly to the finals. You know, maybe it's not a Genji T1 finals. Because my fear is that what will happen um, is T1 will beat Gen or T1 will beat D plus in yep. the uh, in the losers. Sounds likely. Yes, two. I'm with you. And then Hanwa loses to Genji. Yes, they, they get boomed. You know, they, they was, oh, it's winners final zero three drop down T1. Find some weaknesses from Hanwha from yep. their series against them. Their series against. Genji. I'm buying. I'm T1. buying everything you're selling right now. T1 beats Hanwha. <laughs> In the round three losers, and then, and then 3-0 the finals. finals, and then Genji three zeros them in the finals. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I, this is the script. I have the it script. I know the answer. <laughs> it is known. <laughs> it is known. <laughs> it is known. T one beat Hanwha the second time, not the first time. They go to the yep. finals. They get three zero by Genji. Yep. Oh, don't do I it. I think you're right, Wolf. I hate to say it. I think you're right. <laughs> we all know it's I, I coming. Think... We all it know is, it's it is. Happen. It is written in prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, it's all right. Look, LCK playoffs might suck, but MSI will be fun. True. True. Um, Wolf, thoughts on Umti LCS champion? <laughs> I mean, he played really well in playoffs. To be fair. I, I didn't watch that much of the playoffs, but I, I did follow the results pretty closely. Um, and oftentimes just from seeing whatever um, trash talk Umpty was putting out there and uh, leading up until like what he was tweeting and then seeing him go um, filled my heart with joy because he was our general, our, our gin air and bro um, leader uh, to, to be the one relevant person on the team to try to, to kick everybody into gear. Um, I, I miss him sometimes especially with bro's current roster which does not spark joy and did end up getting 10th place um at 3 and 15 i miss him i'm glad he's finding success elsewhere like you know we've seen players leave the lck you know, off mediocre teams and then just like rise and rocket to the top of lcs or or lec 
um, or even like, you know, LLA or something like that. So, you know, if you're on a, a weak team, you, you're struggling to grow in the LCK, it's hard for you to to showcase like your abilities when you're with a roster that feels like it oftentimes can't keep up with you. Um, you get a new perspective when you go to NA. I think that that's super healthy. I'm super happy for him. You know, Pioshik went to NA and then came back stronger, you know, weirdly enough, even though he is still, um, you know, a little bit exposed in this best of five uh, yesterday. I feel like he looked to be a, a more consistent, more well-rounded player for most of the season than what we've seen from him on DRX when he was on that roster in 2022. So you never know. I don't think Umpty's going to come back and, and be on a playoff team here in the LCK, but I'm happy he's, he's finding success and, and getting the bag elsewhere. I mean, I'm just glad he's off Breon so that he can do something else. Because, you know, obviously I think he would probably be an upgrade off of either D plus or KT. So I think he could have ended up on a pretty good Korean roster. But it does warm my heart to see him winning LCS. Do you wanna do you wanna talk about the all pro for yes. real quick? I was gonna I was gonna ask you about that next. All right, <laughs> Wolf. We did it. Chovy was MVP. That was the most important thing that needed to happen. Viper robbed. Wolf, explain to me why people vote pays. Explain this to me. Defend it. This is the first time this has happened to me since we've done All Pro. Um, And it happened to me less than it happened to Ox and Atlas. And I received, because I put Delight ahead of Lehens at second and I put Carrier first in all pro. Uh, honestly, actually... your your even though it's supposed to be regular season, your delight over Lehens I think is going to age very well. He played really well uh so far. Yeah. And I was uh, I did meme about it with my colleagues quite heavily when I was watching uh him play um a few days ago. Like, oh, I okay, he's way worse than Lehens for sure. Um no, but uh so I received, I sent you one of these messages that, that, that like was actually about like 12 pages long. I just sent you a video of me scrolling through this message. Yeah. Um, I, I received probably like six messages or, or seven DMs that were very angry. Some of them it, Google translated into English. Some of them written in Korean very angrily. Um, nothing like threatening to me, to be honest, just a lot of like very angrily written messages. Um, but I know that some of my other colleagues have received less tasteful messages. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into the details of that. That's their story to tell. And I have seen FM Korea posts. So there, there are two big forums in Korea, DC Inside and FM Korea. Uh, DC Inside, I, I would argue, is more commonly used. and But FM Korea is a lot easier to search and, and go through. It's a lot closer to Reddit. And if you want to search through DC Inside, like, good luck. Like, you, you know, it's going to take you hours. It's more of a, like, you were there at that moment. You saw the post. You showed up Probably 20 minutes later, you're never going to find it, yeah. So, um, you know, I don't know what people said on DC Inside, but the amount of hate and anger and rage at Atlas picking Barrel. Um, and... <laughs> Which, by the way, shout out to Atlas. I don't agree with his pick, but it is fucking hilarious that that pick was the one that, like, tipped the balance in Carrie's favor in yeah. first team opera. So funny. So, and then uh, Ox picked Pleta. Um, as his third, but it's pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, and like I think both of these picks, while I don't agree with them, I think you could defend them, and and they they get to vote. That's the that's how fucking voting works. They actually get to choose. They get to have their fucking opinions. Yeah. So so and, they, and they, they get to <laughs> they get to select their own metrics. So uh, and I, look, if 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 you are going to say honestly, like that, you think that the the role of MVP because effectively guys when we're voting for all pro we're voting for the MVP of every position right that's what it is and so if your MVP vote is about which players have the biggest impact on potentially worse teams that that's a viable metric for MVP if that's what MVP means to you you can vote that way yeah. I totally support that and so but there is here's my problem Wolf there is no universe where you can there is no f logical framework where you can say that pays was the best AD carry. Well, so hold on, I'm, I'm getting, I'm almost there. So like, so I see these insanely large threads with, you know, hundreds of comments and there's so many of them and everybody's extremely angry and people tell the commentators to leave the country, get out, like don't, you should not be a part of the LCK to this extreme angry degree. This is 
of course, just one sliver, like just two people's votes of a list of like 20 votes, 20 people who had the, the opportunity to vote, maybe even over 20, something like that. Um, and it's like the front page of the internet that these people are evil and they should quit their jobs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, that doesn't really affect people like me. We've been dealing with this for, for years and years and years. But, and obviously, Ox and, and Atlas, I don't think we're really surfing FM Korea. But I saw that and I realized this is why the Korean commentators just go, boom, first pro, first all pro team, first team in the LCK, second all pro team, second team in the LCK, third it, all pro. It was, it's also the players the because the overwhelming majority of the players, including Faker, just voted for Genji, all of them. So I, I, th I think it's just the fear that you would be put into a scandal if you actually gave an opinion that is different from the hive mind. And I had people telling me, as far as I've seen, like, I could be wrong. So, you know, maybe some commenters may have seen some content out there. Um, let me know. But I had people telling me the Korean commentators voted for Lehens for these reasons. As if the Korean commentators have actually spoken publicly about why they voted for Pays or Lehens. Because have I'm they? pretty sure they have not. I'm pretty sure they have not <laughs> given their reasons. So you, crazy people DMing me, telling me that these are the reasons. You have no idea what their reasons are. You just want me to vote the way that you think it should be. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm not going to. I'm always going to think about my my reasoning for why I want to vote. And I thought Viper was way better than uh, than Pays for the entire season. And I thought so, that Delight was better than Lehens. Let, let's talk about let's talk about pays versus viper because like i said there is no logical framework where you could put pays over viper for the following reasons so the question is do you think that pays's contributions to gen g were outsized well if chovy is literally the mvp of the league he is at best at best the second best player on gen g at best okay so if he has an mvp mid laner then is he relative to other people? In fact, Wolf, here's an argument. Here's a hot take for you. I think Jiwoo is more deserving of all pro than Pays okay, because he has contributed hard. more to his team's victories. <laughs> that's true. Now, but do I like think he's uh, do I think he's objectively better than Pays? No, I don't. So let's move on. Who is <laughs> objectively like not even just relative to their team? Is Pays the best AD carry? In the LCK. No, he's not. That's oh, Viper. That's so, Viper. Vi and, and here's another hot take for you, Wolf. Pays is the worst player on Gen G. Mm, yeah, maybe. That that actually yeah, that might actually be accurate. It's really hard, hard to like objectively say that, but I think you could make an argument for that. And I think that in round one, especially, I felt that way. Um, for a majority of round one, I was a so, little bit worried about his performances. Actually, also you have recency bias because both Pays and Lehens were very bad in the laning phase in the first round robin, and like they picked it up. And I credit to Pays and Lehens, their lane performance was very instrumental to the T one victory that Genji achieved during round two. And by the way, I think Pays is a very good AD carry. I can think he's a very good AD carry. I can think that he's worthy. Probably, I would put him second team All Pro. I can think he's the second best AD carry in the league or the third best. But the point is, is that there isn't a logical framework that you can actually create that says that pays is the best AD carry because he's not the best AD carry. And he's also not super important to Gen J's victories. And objectively, if you swap out pays for Jiwoo, I don't think Gen J's performance changes. I mean, that might, that might be true. Like th that, that, is you know Jiwoo is going to have a lot more power than than he has on Nongshim. Obviously, if he has a real team around him that's that's making great macro decisions, he could play around. Uh, he won't he won't end up on a roster like that for a while. Maybe maybe in the future because Jiwoo is actually legit good, as we've talked about many times here on the show. But um, you know, I think a lot of people vote All Pro for oh, it would be the best team you could build that you would want to send to like an international if you could build one. You know, then you put Viper on uh, Genji. Sorry. And, and I and I think that I would. The only argument you could make would be like, well, Pays already has synergy, but this is a makeup team, so it doesn't matter. Like I don't I don't actually care. And I had a lot of people telling me like, and Lehens Lehens is shot calling, and his babysitting of Pays is really you know you could feel it, right? It's 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 very palpable. Like I look at it, and I'm like, okay, yes, I, I could I could see like Lehens like put his head in his hands when Pays makes a mistake that he shouldn't, and like he is babysitting him, and that has been the case for a while. 
Um, and a lot of people said that I should have voted for Lehens because his shot calling is better than Delight's. And I just, I, I look at this. If and I go, you take Caria out of T1, they lose. They, 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 they literally like it. Caria dis- defines Caria yeah. and Zayas define T1 style. Yeah. I, I, know, I did. I had almost no people saying, I mean, I had one, one angry person, but for the most part, and even on online, when I saw other people's votes about Caria, like most people were like, Okay, I think Lehen should have gotten it, but like I will understand the carrier first vote. Most people, in regards to me, were upset that I said Delight was better than Lehen's, and I should have put Lehen second. But and a lot of the 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 comments about this were about his shot calling. I'm like, I I can sometimes in comms when I when I watch back like when they show it on the screen, know what the shot calling is because I speak Korean well enough and I could see who's talking and who's making the calls. Sure. But I can't I can't actively tell you guys at any moment in time unless I have that um you know clip that they show at the end, right? The the open mic they show at the end, or a first person VOD where where like the hens is yelling, what impacts which team fights he's shot calling versus what in what team fights uh Canyon is shot calling versus what t- uh team fights Chovy is calling for. And we know Lehens is the shot caller, but I can't just vote because in ambiguously say Lehens is better because I know his shot calling is better than what Delights did. And by the way, I see a lot more shot calling from Delight in those comms, just to put it out there. <laughs> I see a lot more from him, a lot more vocal. Uh, I, I know Lehens is the shot caller, and he's also the team captain. We, we know this, but like, I wasn't going to vote based on like things I can't actually actively track or see. I was just going to ba- vote based on what I thought, which of these two supports made the higher impact. And for me, it was Delight. And I think for the rest of playoffs, it will remain that way for me. Even if Jinji wins the whole tournament, does that mean that Lehens is better than Delight? Not necessarily. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. But I just want, I wanted to talk about this briefly because the angry, the anger like that, I, I actually normally just don't even look at this. I don't even care. But I, I got a bunch of messages. Like, what do people say online? I saw the anger. And then that was the moment I realized, like, this is why the votes happen the way they do. is because people just don't want to deal with it. I think that's that's legit. It. They just don't want to deal with the angry craziness of all these people who make up reasons why the player they thought deserved it deserved it. Um, and people are just going to go tier list instead because that's easier. And it's sad. And, and if people are just going to vote like this, then why do we do this? It's the real question. You could just look at the regular season standings and be like, well, these are the best yep. players. So that that's, you know, that's my take. I, I was pretty frustrated, pretty disappointed with a lot of really angry um, Korean fans that I think their passion is a little bit misplaced. Like, like I said, nobody really sent me messages that were like, I hope you quit or, you know, I want you to kill yourself or anything like that. You know, we, I didn't get anything like that myself, but I I saw a lot of angry, passionate messages that I think were a little bit misplaced. I I want people out there. If anyone watches this, because this probably get posted to those websites, you know, like, just just think about the fact that this is a, a vote system where everyone can make their own choices and we all have reasons for the choices we made. And you know what? Maybe if you want to change it, maybe one day you could be an LCK analyst and get your own vote. <laughs> I, I have a message for them. Stop being babies and abusing people online over votes and also use your brains and realize that Viper is the best AD carry in the league. And here's the thing. You guys can be as mad as me as you want. There you go. Fuck you. <laughs> as mean as Montia. I think you guys, I think you guys have your big hearts, but your, your, your hearts and your faith is misplaced and you need to, to rethink some things. <laughs> I, I think you're immature babies raging anonymously on the internet and you can go fuck yourselves. So we each have different opinions. See, we each have different opinions. <laughs> it's true. Just like we do about all pro. <laughs> um but yeah i mean look i I understand what you're saying wolf but at the same time like you could say oh they don't want to be exposed to this anger but also nut up and like make real picks who cares about (laughs) what plebs say about you on the internet get some thick skin and make the real picks because this is this is a historical record that is being created and you are fucking it up by placating the audience. You are fucking it up. So also I have no respect for the people who are doing that. I don't respect anybody in this situation. I don't respect the people making the choices. I don't respect the fans. Everybody can go get fucked. I mean, I, I think I voted pretty well 
What about me? You respect me. I agree. Not you. <laughs> I, I actually think I actually think that the English speaking commentators, I understood most of their votes. The um, blood of the barrel votes were a little I I, I almost want to call them like fanboyish. Like uh, it was like oh, sure. I really, I really but again, if if you are literally saying that Pleta and and Barrel have had outsized contributions to their teams, and there is a, there is definitely a world where a player can be the MVP on a bad roster. Like yeah. if if Kwango is in fourth place at the end of this or third place at the end of this split, we have to have a very serious conversation, most likely about is Cuz MVP of the league. Yeah. And that would be a valid vote. Now they didn't accomplish that. They lost to Brian. They fucked it up, but. There were a few weeks there where, like, Cuz being MVP, he was probably the leading MVP candidate. Yeah. Does he deserve and, it now? No. And and I and I do think the barrel and plot of votes, like, they, it depends on your vote metric. For most people, they wouldn't have put them top three, but we can understand the, the votes. And, like, you know, when, when they told me they were going to vote that way, I was like, that's that's up to you, man. I, and I laughed, but I was like, you know, it, it, it's it's legit. You know, people might be upset, but you can do that. And frankly, I don't think they care about people being upset, although they did tell me some very interesting messages they got <laughs> um, because of it. But those votes did ultimately affect, um, you know, whether Lehens made, you know, top or not um, in, in first all pro. And that's just how it is. That's that's how voting works. And uh, I, I, I don't I don't. I don't want to have to explain to angry people anymore that because we have the right to vote, we can vote for any anything we want, and that's how it is. And people can be mad, and that's that's why it's public. That's why the votes are public, which is very important. So you guys can be mad. That's also your right. Sure. But like harassing and 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 going insane and telling people to quit their jobs, like that's that's not your right, actually. <laughs> I mean, I guess it is actually your right, but like it's not going to change anything. It's not going to make people want to vote the way that you. I don't know. I kind of want to tell some of the Korean casters to quit their jobs after seeing their votes, Wolf, because their jobs is to their jobs are to accurately analyze this league and putting pays as first team all pro is not an, anywhere near an accurate analysis. So, I mean, like I said, as far as I know, they've never spoken publicly about their votes. And, you know, I I told you before that there were some some discussions about like. Look, uh, Wolf, I had to slap down this fucking like pays for MVP in summer of last year, too, which was another ridiculous like, Wolf, can you explain to me why does everyone have a giant boner for pays? Why? Like, he's I good, but he is not MVP first team all pro good. I think it's because a lot of um, people, not not even necessarily the Korean commentators, but in production and on the LCK side, really want to star make pays really hard because he's one of the new players that actually has a ton of talent that is very good um like Zayas who was then star built and I think Zayas was in, in, in part star built by the fact that he was wearing a T1 jersey and so he just sure obviously gets all, gets all of that but um I think there's a lot of people who really want to make pays into like a almost like full cure of the LCK like he's young he's a little bit awkward in his interviews but he's growing he's he's improving he's he's becoming a, a big star I mean he's in the opening video right like he steps on the royal road um and looks at the three trophies the Gen G trophies I I think that there's a lot going on in terms of like let's make this guy famous um because he otherwise he's just a really awkward guy who's extremely young and he probably won't become famous on his own but I don't think that's like why people voted for him. What I was gonna say is, like I said, as far as I know, the Korean commentators didn't speak about their votes publicly. Why they voted for this? You know, in the past we'd have like commentators like Conkwe go on his stream and and actually like explain stuff and like what his opinions are. I don't know if we've really seen that. Like I don't know if Nofa has like turned his stream on and, and given his takes or anything like that. But if we have, my bad. But I, I, as far as I know, there no one has told me like what their reasons are, and maybe they have a reason that could convince me. But I don't, I don't think so. But until then, I'm not ready to like tell the Korean commentators I'm really disappointed with their votes because, like I said, they can vote for whoever they want. Actually, as long as they have their own reasons, and I'm sure they do, they're professional commentators. But I don't agree with their votes. But I'm also not gonna go on to the forums about it. I will talk about it on this show, and we did, and we think Pays doesn't deserve first in his in his role. Um, but you know, until we we bring one of those Korean commentators on the show and and he gets to to rationalize it, I'm not gonna tell him to quit Monty. I'm not like you. I'm not going to go that far, but uh, <laughs> but I I will say that I I do think Pays was not the best AD carry. 
not by a long shot. It was clearly Viper, and Viper was robbed. Yep. It's all right. You know, maybe maybe some people, if he beats T1, will actually figure out that perhaps it is Viper who is the person carrying this team to top two status as opposed to, you know, other members. Like, I, I just don't get it. Like, who who do they think is carrying this team? Do they think it's like Zekka and Doran? Like, what? I, I actually, like, I don't even know who... Is on the third. Who is on the third All Pro for mid? Zeka. And before it's Zeka. Is it actually Zeka? It's Zeka. Yes. I mean, I, I, that's not that crazy. But I, but I was like, we could tell like who what they think if we see that. Um, no, nah, I don't. I don't know, Monty. Zeka was disqualified from the Corky Games in my mind. So is 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 third All Pro Doran owner Zeka? And then Viper Delight? Is that no, what Viper was second team. Gumi Yushi. Oh, sorry, yeah. Guma, Guma, Delight, Guma, Guma Delight, right? Yeah. Okay. No, it was four members. Uh, owner was second team. So everybody on T1 was second team except Karia. And then everybody on third team was was Hanwa. So also Peanut lost to Owner, which is also just that, fucking that ridiculous. Can't be, that, can't, that, can't be, that can't be real. I'm not yeah, okay it, with that. It, Especially, except for it was Guma on third team. But here's the question, Wolf. Here's the question. So, Hanwa beats T1 in the second round robin. But yeah. four members of Hanwa are worse than f- four members of T1. But the most important member... But the most important member is not first team All-Pro. Weird. But also the, well, but, the most important member. But, in that but Caria is first team all pro. So how does Wolf explain to me how this works? Well, I it's can fucking tell weird. You, I can tell you the reason why Caria is first all pro is because Pleta and Barrel got votes for um, <laughs> over Lens. And also, oh, but it still doesn't. It still doesn't matter, Wolf, because it would still be four members of T1 are better than four members of Hanwa, and, I think and the, therefore, well, and the therefore, only... Wolf. How did how could Hanwa possibly win this game? Unless Wolf, unless the one member of Hanwa was way better, but that member is second team All Pro with T One, so they're the same tier. So all of T One is on the same tier as Viper, but Hanwa won. How the fuck does that work? Well, Peanut. I mean, also Peanut was the the real MVP of that series. I feel and of course he's below owner is is actually crazy. But the only reason why Viper got second. By the way, I'm pretty sure is because all of the English casters voted him first. That's like the only reason why Viper got second. The other was probably, it's probably true, first, actually, which is just a tragedy. Um, I don't want to talk about it anymore, Monty. It's, it's actually I'm, I was I was I calmed down. Then I was like, listen, the like, Korean commentators have their opinions. Now I'm getting I'm yeah, angry. Yeah, but see, again. now you understand why I was so angry because I'm like, this none of this actually makes sense. Like logically, the teams that have been put out by the voting don't are not inter. The logic is not internally consistent. I don't know, Monty. Hopefully, it'll be better in summer, but we know it won't be. So we'll have this <laughs> conversation again in a few months. <laughs> no, I just find it even more hilarious if Hanwa actually does beat T one this week, because then we'll have two Hanwa wins re- in recent memory. But. All Pro does not actually explain how Hanwa could ever win these matchups. Because here's the here's the other here's the other problem, Wolf. So you could also say you could also say that Hanwa was more than the sum of their parts, right? So their teamwork got them to the win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is why you voted for Gen G as all, because if you, if you value, if you say, because I think this is the logic that Koreans use, the best players are the ones with the best teamwork. So therefore all pro should be the five best players are the five players on the best team, right? It's a team game. Okay. But if you believe that and Han was beating T1, then therefore they must also be better at teamwork. So they should all be second team all pro. Just going to put that out there. Look, 
I, I, I don't want to, I don't even, I think my explanation of the Korean commentators voting is crazy. <laughs> Yours man. is the only one that makes sense because by any, by any framework you actually vote on, th their votes don't make sense. So it must be fear. That's the, that's the only logical conclusion. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, the, the way uh, we've talked about this on the show in the past, like oftentimes the way Korean fans react to things will directly impact like if someone if the Korean fans are mad at you, like extremely mad at you, could in fact affect your ability to be hired on other side content and stuff like that. So you know, it, it it's real, it's dumb, but it is what it is. And we're gonna keep getting first pl first place all pro teams because of it. And hopefully it. they'll change their ways. Uh maybe this show gets translated and they'll they'll watch it and we'll know. Or maybe I'll talk to them about it during playoffs and be like, why'd you guys vote like that? Um, and I'll report <laughs> back. But uh <laughs> sounds good. All right, guys, we'll be, we've got very good matchups coming up this next week. Uh, you know, these were obviously a little bit disappointing, but we've got before next week, we have Gen G versus D plus T one versus Hanwha. And then the winners finals happening on Sunday night. So lots of exciting games over the next couple of weeks. We'll see you for next week's episode of the Monty and Wolf show till then.